It's that time of the year again. Oh. Well, if you have lived in North America for long enough, you would know what I'm talking about. It is commonly believed that about 30 to 40 percent of people may suffer from some form of seasonal allergies in the U.S. However, that number may be underreported because many people never seek medical attention for their stuffy noses and itchy eyes. Now, any regular pharmacist would just tell people with seasonal allergies to go get a bottle of antihistamine on that shelf and take one pill every day and be done with it. But that is not the reason you click on this video, right? So I'm going to share some evidence of what natural remedies work and what does not work for your stuffy nose and itchy eyes. And let's take a look. Well, first is local honey. Now, if you have had seasonal allergy for some time, you probably have heard about or even tried taking local honey for uh, your allergies. Now, does it work for you? Well, if it works for you, that's wonderful. But I would not be so surprised if your answers are, well, it sort of work or I guess it works, or I really don't know if it works or not. Now, let's think about this. Honey, regardless of whether it's local or from faraway places, is collected from beehives, and honeybees collect uh, pollens and nectar from flowers, which ends up in the hive and turns into honey. Now, let's now ask yourself again. A seasonal allergy caused directly by flower pollens. Well, pollens are not created or equal. And when you're experiencing symptoms from seasonal allergy, it is because you breathe in pollens or pollen is latching onto your face or near your eye. And these pollens are small enough to be suspended in the air. And they are as small as 2.5 micron, which is about one-tenth of the size of a strand of human hair, and as big as about 200 microns. Now, smaller pollens are usually found in weeds and trees and grasses, and they can easily travel in the wind and are a common cause of seasonal allergies. On the other hand, uh, flower pollens tend to be bigger and heavier unless you are sniffing directly from a blooming flower. The chance of exposure to this bigger flower in the air is much smaller than the smaller tree and grass pollen. So the idea of taking honey made from flower pollens and nectar to build up a tolerance uh, so that your immune system would not overreact to cause allergy is not exactly the right remedy for many people because those are the wrong pollens. And I know you're going to get mad, some of you. You swear it works. Well, I agree that it is not easy to find randomized controlled trial evidence to see whether honey alone works. And I do find something for you. And let's take a look. Now, here is a um, study okay, from 2010. A French randomized control trial was done to see the effect of taking um, birch tree pollen honey versus regular honey with daily antihistamine drugs. Now, it's interesting that it showed that during the birch pollen season in 2009 in France, patients who took birch pollen honey uh, with their daily antihistamine reported a statistically significant 60% lower total symptom scores, twice as many asymptomatic days, and 70% fewer days with severe symptoms. In addition, they used 50% fewer antihistamine than the control group who took no honey. So maybe honey works, right? Now, the differences between the uh, birch pollen honey and regular honey groups were not significant. However, the birch pollen honey patients used fewer antihistamines than the regular honey patients. Now, notice that the study was relatively small. Okay, but the strongest evidence is that 
taking honey with antihistamine medicines was better than taking medications alone. All right. And a very extensive、uh, German study、uh, review article published in 2020 analyzed 129 books on AP therapy, which is, means alternative therapy that uses products made by honeybees for medicinal purposes. Now, those books were analyzed regarding recommendations for seasonal allergic rhinitis, also known as seasonal allergies. That is. Affecting the nose. Now, in addition, they also searched PubMed and just find some of those database to find scientific evidence regarding the efficacy of using various bee products. Now, interestingly, even though there were so many books on using honey bee products for medicinal purposes, only thirty eight. Percent or about fifty books mentioned seasonal allergic rhinitis, and about half of these books recommend using bee products, and one is against using honey. They also、um, only find one clinical study with the most reasonable recommendation of using mixed of、uh, honey and pollen. So. What it tells us is that the best we can say is that the evidence for using honey and other bee products alone for relieving seasonal allergies is not very strong, but it can soothe and coat a sore throat and create a relief in that regard. So, well, I just say honey may not work so well. Well, then, well, the title says natural remedies. What could work or what may work? Well, here. What is this? Well, it looks like an onion. Well, an onion may work, but I'm holding this is a、um, shallot. Well,、um, quite strong. Well, well, I'm well, I'm not saying that you just eat shallot and can relieve allergy symptoms. Okay, there's no study about that, but there is a some study showing a very interesting result. And let's take a look. Now, a newly published randomized control trial tested whether shallot has A similar anti-allergenic、um, activity to the onion and its therapeutic effects in allergic rhinitis when added to standard treatment. Now, notice that it's added to standard treatment. The study. Now, sixteen allergic、um, rhinitis patients were randomized equally into controls and received cetirizine, which is a antihistamine drug, ten milligram once daily, and placebo capsules. Uh, for four weeks. Now、uh, those placebo capsules、uh, do made it with shallot smell, so、uh, the patients were, you know, fooled into taking those placebos. And the treatment group were receiving three grams of shallot extract capsules per day, which is equivalent to about、uh, one and a half bulb, according to their.、Um, You know, writing plus cetirizine ten milligram per day. Now, the first part of the study did do some scientific analysis, HPLC, and they showed that、uh, the shallot and onion had a similar amount of uh, uh, quercetin. Okay, now quercetin related compounds. Now, quercetin is believed to be an active compound that may have allergy symptoms relief. Properties. So after four weeks of treatment, sixty-two point five of the patient in the Charlotte group and thirty-seven point five of patients in the control group showed improvement in post-treatment overall symptoms. Nasal symptoms were significantly reduced in both groups. Now, however, no differences between groups were found、uh, in these、uh, nasal symptom relief. Now, however, eye symptoms were significantly improved only in the Charlotte group. But interestingly, the adverse events from Charlotte were not different from. The placebo. Now that is not surprising. Nevertheless, shallot or shallot extract is just some food、uh, substance. Now notice that this study was designed like the honey study in that natural supplement were added to conventional antihistamines for symptomatic relief. A shallot supplement appears to have some added effect to just taking the drug alone. Now let's look at the next study. A similar Japanese study also showed that taking a new food-grade bioavailable formulation of quercetin alone for four weeks significantly improved 
allergic symptoms compared to control. Now, notice that I have a disclaimer here. I'm not promoting a product. Uh, this study was funded by the manufacturer of that particular supplement. So I would be very cautious about that result because of the high potential for conflict of interest. All right. Now let's look at a older study, a 2009 clinical study by uh, Japanese academic researchers. So they have a less, much less uh, conflict of interest. Tested whether modified uh, uh, quercetin compounds relieve Japanese cedar pollen allergies. So in a parallel group, a double blind placebo controlled study designed 20 subjects with Japanese cedar uh, pollen uh, allergies took two capsules daily of 100 grams of this uh, modified quercetin compound or placebo for eight weeks during the pollen season. And during the entire study period, the treatment group had significantly fewer aller allergic eye symptoms than the control group, but there were no statistically meaningful improvements in other uh, allergy symptoms. So note that both of those um, Charlotte study does help with eye symptoms, so that is a similarity there. Now, the bottom line is that all studies use, you know, no matter it's used like honeybee products and uh, onion related products that we talked about in this video, contain uh, or, or those substances that contain quercetin, showed no adverse effect, so they are safe. Now, Although the evidence of using natural remedies alone to fight allergic symptoms is not very consistent, okay, based on my, you know, finding for this video, it does, however, appear to have some relief, okay, particularly for eye, you know, for the Charlotte uh, compound, and may help patients to use fewer antihistamine drugs. But from a personal perspective, if you follow the channel long enough, uh, you would have known that I do take uh, antihistamine. I'm not trying to show the brand, but this is the purple one. Uh, it is uh, faxophenidine for my uh, allergy symptoms, particularly you know with the nose symptoms during this time of the year. Now, while I don't experience side effects personally, uh, some common side effects of these second generation uh, antihistamines such as fexofenadine, loretidine, and sertirazine include a headache, tiredness, abdominal discomfort, nausea, or vomiting. And a lot of these you know, side effects, my wife do, does experience those when she takes these allergy med. Now, so, and also these side effects are dose dependent, meaning the more a person takes it, uh, the more side effects. So when some evidence shows honey or onion or quercetin supplements could reduce the frequency of using antihistamines, I think it's worth trying, in my opinion. Now, at the end of the day, I think unless a person has specific allergies to onion compound or to honey, drinking a cup of um, honey lemon tea and or a bowl of Onion bone broth is quite soothing and, you know, tasty in, in my opinion. So lastly, I want to show you one more thing that uh, nasal saline, okay, uh, wash is effective in relieving allergic nose symptoms. Now, the most important thing to keep in mind is that only use distilled or boiled cool down water. That means they are sterile to make the saline to avoid potential pathogens in the water. Okay, that is a must must if you are trying to use those. So that is all for this week. And I'm Dr. Han, I'm a pharmaceutical scientist and a, sci and a pharmacist who is not here to tell you to take more medicines. Now, if you would like to learn more about how to optimize your body and take fewer drugs, then I hope to see you again in my future videos. And if you are eager to learn hardcore science, hardcore immunology contents, college level on allergies and hypersensitivities, all the, all the you know, interleukins and all these things that is behind the science, check out my educational videos on my 
Pro Channel, Pharmacy Classroom Pro Channel. And so that is all for this week. And thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you again. And eat healthily and stay healthy. Take good care. Bye.